This is Sideways on the Edge with Castro. Macau, a bustling city that's a whole lot bigger than its 27 square kilometer area. You can call it a little Las Vegas for the throng of spectacular top-notch casinos that light up its nights. Its rich culture, awesome food, and its annual motorsports festival that's awaited by the entire world, the Macau Grand Prix. Every year, Macau city streets are converted into an actual racetrack, as it has been for decades, bringing in hundreds of thousands of avid fans and drivers alike from all over the globe. It's hard to discern which of its races from various classes are the Grand Prix's main highlights, but Formula BMW is certainly one of them. With me right now is the uh, team owner of uh, Team Eurasia Motorsport, Mr. Mark Goddard. How are you doing, sir? Fine. Uh, we're just about to go out for qualifying now, um, which is always a very nerve-wracking time. If we get all four cars back in one piece, I'll be very happy. What are the status of the cars right now? So far, so good. Practice went very well, so uh, hopefully we can carry that forward into qualifying. And, and uh, if we can be on the first uh, two, three rows, you've got a really good chance here in Macau of winning. To get on the podium, you've got to finish, obviously. Um, so uh, it's, it's the easiest track to go off. If you lose concentration for just one millisecond, then you hit the wall. Can you give me a lineup of our drivers today? Okay, well, we have Axel Jeffries, who's actually finished third in the championship. Um, he's from Zimbabwe. Chris Wooten, who's from Australia. I think he's sixth in the championship at the moment, but could come fourth if he gets a good result in the race. James Cole, who's the reigning British uh, Formula Ford champion. And our fourth driver is Paul Lau, who's a Hong Kong Chinese quite famous driver. He's just doing it for fun. Fantastic. Looks like we have the United Nations with the Team Eurasia Motorsport, but uh, we got a very tight team. Yep, yep. I mean, we're Philip based team you know so it's a Filipino team we have English we have uh, African we have Australian we've almost got all the continents of the world here fantastic not to mention you're using Castro Ledge which is like basically the best oil that you could use yeah of course I mean we won the Asian Formula 3 championship using Castro uh, we use it in the Formula BMWs all the time it's the best oil all right well the best of luck for uh, this race and we're gonna find out the results later on thank you Mark okay. but away we go. Buller gets away well. NASA was creeping. Let's hope he's not penalized. Pla got away well. Everybody cleanly through. Reservoir turn and down now for the first time towards the Mandarin corner. Yeah, Philip Narsa, he moved this car quite a lot on the grid, so I think he might get a penalty because it was quite evident. Well, especially if he takes the lead. He's side by side as they go through. The Mandarin corner. Oh, no! One of the Hulser men goes straight into that carnage. Oh, oh, I do not like to see that at all. That was a massive shot. Racing at the Dia Circuit of the Macau Grand Prix is like throwing a pair of dice on a table at a grand casino. You never really know if your strong bet will turn out a winner or otherwise. Despite the encouraging results from the previous day's qualifying race, Team Eurasia Motorsport, along with the several other teams competing in Formula BMW Pacific, got the ultimate shock of their race weekend. On the very first lap out of eight, one driver, probably overcome by adrenaline and a lack of better judgment at this early stage of the race, went full on into the Mandarin bend even before their tires had started to properly warm up and overshot his turn, slamming with full force straight into the barriers. A massive pileup ensued, involving 17 out of the record 23 entrants, to the utter surprise and dismay of their team members and thousands of excited spectators. Only eight finished. Luckily, Axel Jeffries of Eurasia Motorsport finished fifth overall, despite a punctured tire, and on his debut race nonetheless. Team owner Mark Goddard elaborates on the incident. 
We were very hopeful we'd have a very good result, but unfortunately because of the first lap accident, which uh, completely destroyed Chris's car. Um, Axel was very lucky because uh, he was hit by some debris. It broke the front left wheel rim, but the tire didn't go down. So obviously uh, he had slow puncture, which affected his speed in the race, but no, it was his lucky day then. And uh, Paul Lau got caught up in the accident as well, as did James Cole. So obviously it's a street track and that's the fastest at, uh, where it happened mandarin is the fastest corner in the world almost um but even these cars it's a 220 kilometer an hour corner um cold tires uh, one guy tried to go in flat out without lifting from the wrong side of the road uh hit chris which then put both of them in the wall and of course they're bouncing across the road with tires and gearboxes going everywhere and uh, um, you know everyone else got involved so it was one of the more spectacular accidents uh, we'll probably see but um, uh, fortunately no one's seriously injured despite all the the practice all the preparations all the you know technical uh, preparedness uh, you know still some factors rely on the roll of the dice and that's motorsports for you yeah well, I mean, they say Macau's one big casino anyway, you know. <laughs> well put. <laughs> yeah, no, we rolled the dice, but the numbers came out wrong today. Um, so, I mean, last year, you know, we started, I think, seventh on the grid and got on the podium, you know, so it went well for us last year. This year it hasn't, so we'll come back again next year. And that brings to the fore exactly the, the value of these uh, friends who are supporting us to keep us going in this motorsport. Yeah, exactly. We we rely on our supporters and sponsors. Uh, Castrol has sponsored the team for many, many years. Um, so they have a great motorsport heritage. Um, uh, obviously, it's uh, the best oil you can buy. Um, so we really value the support of uh, guys like Castrol and BMW as well. And uh, they're helping us to produce the Formula One stars of tomorrow. And I can guarantee that at least two drivers on the grid today will be in Formula One from Formula BMW. How young are you? Well, I'm 15. I'm the youngest in Formula BMW. My first year in single seaters, but uh, I've been racing for 10 years. And yeah, it's been a long, long time. Since five. Since, since I was five years old. But I mean, it's been great so far. We've won quite a few championships in South Africa, Zimbabwe, in Europe. We won lots of races. So I mean, we've showed uh, uh, class, but it's still a big learning curve in the single seaters. So. What can you say about Team Eurasia Motorsport? I think they're a fantastic team. I've learned so much from them this year. I'm really grateful to the guys. The mechanics have worked really hard this year. Um, I mean, they've stayed up late a few nights getting the car ready, but I mean, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, big thanks to them, and it's been a great year. This is Renee. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hi, everyone. Good to see you again here at the Macau Grand Prix. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to be here also. You definitely are an aspiring motorsports driver as well, and um, you know, you've driven uh, other classes, and uh, eventually I think you're, you're going to end up in uh, Formula BMW as well. Is that right? I'm really working hard on that, and that's my goal right now. Hopefully next year I can race either Renault or BMW. That's got to be like a deadly combination, being in modeling, and a little bit of show business. I know you came out in a movie in China, and at the same time, you're coupling it with motorsports. I'm just basically really interested in learning a little bit of everything. Motorsports is fun, and it you also need to learn, so it's, it's a combination of two things I like to do. You've also like uh, spent most of your life in China, so I understand that you, you should be able to speak uh, Mandarin pretty uh, fluently. Yeah. Would you like to say hi to your uh, new fans in the Philippines? Wow. This has been Sideways on the Edge with Castro.